In 1971, for the first time in five years, the Oakland Raiders did not play in the conference championship. Disaster stalked the Raiders, pro football's winningest team the past five years, as they crushed the Rams, 49ers, and Colts in preseason. Running back, Hewitt Dixon was gone for the year. Receiver Warren Wells was gone for the year. Running back Charlie Smith was gone until the final games. What would have happened if the Dallas Cowboys had lost Dwayne Thomas, Calvin Hill, and Bob Hayes? Or if Miami lost Zonka, Kick, and Warfield? They would have dropped from contention. Yet in 1971, Despite losing players responsible for 3,000 yards and 18 touchdowns, the silver and black remained feared championship contenders because of a dedicated organization and sterling field leadership from gifted head coach John Madden, talented veteran assistants Oliver Spencer, Tom Doms, Ray Malavese, and Bob Zeman, skillful trainer George Anderson, and capable equipment director Dick Romanski. There is no substitute for victory now, so the true greatness of the Raiders must remain in their future and their glorious past. But if battling insurmountable odds is still a virtue, then in 1971 the silver and black may well have had their finest hour. The league season opened in New England's new stadium against New England's new quarterback, Jim Plunkett. The Raiders unveiled three rookie starters of their own. Number 31 safety Jack Tatum was one, and he recovered two fumbles. Despite severe personnel losses, Raider running behind number 63 Gene Upshaw showed promise with another newcomer, Clarence Davis, gliding for 39 yards. Pete Banaszak had the lone Oakland score as he slashed into the end zone. But inches spelled the Raiders' doom. And in the end, Plunkett passed his Patriots to a 20-6 upset win. It was the last time the Oakland Raiders would lose for nine weeks. In San Diego, Oakland faced the second of four demanding consecutive road games. The Raider defense dominated as all pro Willie Brown challenged John Hadle's air attack. Rookie and Horace Jones, number 82, and Harold Rice, number 67, blasted in on Hadle and forced the Chargers into desperate gambles made even more desperate when the determined silver and black dug in and refused to yield. And then the Raiders' famed precision passing flashed into action. Daryl LaMonica to Fred Bolitnikoff accounted for two scores. Clarence Davis behind blocking by Shell, Upshaw, Beeler, Jim Otto, and Bob Brown raced in for another. Middle backer Dan Connors picked off two interceptions. And as he and Darrell looked on, Ken Stabler finished the charges. The lopsided 34-0 triumph was Oakland's first shutout ever over San Diego. Next in Cleveland for a Monday night national TV game. LaMonica's throwing hand was giving him trouble.
Early in the contest, the offense missed by inches. But the undefeated Browns weren't missing and led 14 to nothing. Then the Raider rookie wreckers went to work. Linebacker Phil Villapiano shut down the corner. Horace Jones shut down passes. And Jack Tatum made a great interception in return. Darrell Arch de Bomb to number 87, tight end Raymond Chester. And utilizing the diverse design of the Raider attack, he then threw a screen to Marv Hubbard, who powered for 31 yards. The relentless Raiders roll for 24 fourth quarter points. Clarence Davis put Oakland ahead 24-20, and Banizak finished Cleveland off as the nation learned that though the Raiders had lost key players, including veteran Tom Keating, with a broken leg in this game, they had lost none of their class and courage. In Denver, a punishing Oakland defense set the tone. Bill Villapiano was everywhere at once, making the inches count. And suddenly, inches meant points as Jimmy Warren intercepted and streaked 55 yards for six. Stabler to Chester gave an indication of why the Raiders would finish second in scoring in the entire NFL in 1971. Their touchdown team-up brought the game under control. Stabler then provided the insurance himself, and the Raiders had their third in a row. At last, they were ready to come home. Finally, five weeks into the season, the silver and black returned to the Oakland Coliseum, the stadium built in response to their monumental rise as a pro football power. They had come home to meet the surging Philadelphia Eagles, who quickly took a 10 to nothing halftime lead. But even though shorthanded, the Raiders would not shortchange the total sellout Coliseum crowd. A wide open Fred Bolitnikov fooled everyone on this score as he kept on the road to a 1971 NFL pass receiving championship. And Raider runners, led by powerful Marv Hubbard, were end zone bound regardless of obstacles. Number 32, Don Highsmith, went in from 14 yards out. And then came the unexpected quick strike, long a trademark of the comeback conscious Raiders, as George Atkinson scooped up a fumble and raced in to score. It was Oakland's second touchdown in 15 seconds. It destroyed the Eagles and gave the silver and black four in a row. The Raiders, pro football's winningest team the past five years, were right on their winning ways. But for the Bengals, the inches went against them as Raymond Chester just managed to score. Marv Hubbard continued to shred opponents' defenses. and Hubbard showed Raider versatility by taking this perfect George Blander pass in for six points. 
However, Paul Brown's Bengals are always tough for Oakland, and Cincinnati led 27 to 24 with time running out. But number 80, Art Toms, smothered the Bengal offense. Then Clarence Davis put the Raiders in close. Marv Hubbard strained in and gave Oakland another great come-from-behind victory. Arch-rival Kansas City came next, and as always in the tough AFC Western Division, it was all-out war. Ben Davidson dropped in on Lenny Dawson often. And so did number 84, Tony Klein, and number 55, Dan Connors, to sabotage the Chiefs' attack. But football remains a game of inches, as number 54 rookie linebacker Terry Mendenhall found out when, with the Raiders trailing, his fumble recovery was allowed, but his touchdown run wasn't. With the Chiefs ahead, 20 to 10, the Raider defense shut off the Chiefs' passing game. and the Raiders' air attack burst to life. Twenty-two-year pro veteran George Blander connected with Chester. and then hit Bolitnikov to make it 20 to 17. The Raider line now without tackle Bob Brown, who suffered a first period knee injury, sprung Don Highsmith goalward. And George Blander's last minute field goal not only earned a 2020 comeback tie to keep the Raiders six game unbeaten string alive, but also made Blander pro football's all time leading scorer. In New Orleans, number 85, Carlton Oates, and number 34, Gus Otto, made things tough for the Saints' offense in the first half. Meanwhile, the Oakland secondary played the game of inches just right. While the defense made the inches count, the offense gobbled up enough yards to take a 14 to nothing lead. But the Saints benefited from a puzzling roughing call and went on to score. The Raiders counted and the lead looked safe. But misfortune struck, a season-ending injury to linebacker Gus Otto, then a game-ending fumble recovery that was disallowed. And finally, the untimely penalties that gave the Saints second chances and a 21-21 tie. The Oilers came to Oakland, California and paid dearly for the Raiders' frustration at two consecutive tie games. Maya Wilson's interception paved the way as LaMonica, behind protection from veteran Ron Mix, lifted a 63-yard strike to number 89, Drew Bowie. Two more interceptions proved the Raiders would settle for no tie this day. second score ballooned the Oakland lead to 21 to nothing. Silver and black might and muscle ruled this day. Once again, Jimmy Warren slashed in, stole the ball and weaved to pay dirt and an impressive 41 to 21 win. 
It was the Raiders' eighth straight game without defeat. When the Chargers arrived, they set out to avenge the earlier shutout and leaped into a substantial 24-10 lead. But unlike many teams, the Raiders are traditionally most dangerous when behind. And soon they struck back for yardage that blew away the Charger lead. Sherman's great catch made it 34-24 Oakland. But the Chargers in their final game under coach Sid Gilman rallied to trail by only 34-31. With time fleeting, they were driving again when an intense rush set up Dan Connor's clutch interception. Then coach John Madden instructed punter Jerry DePoister to take an intentional safety while running out the clock, preserving a nine-game undefeated string that experts had labeled impossible for injury-wracked Oakland. The defending world champion Baltimore Colts came next, and the battle-worn Raiders had problems, problems that turned opportunities into mistakes by inches. Even Blander's toss to Belitnikov could not stop the Colts who rolled on and put an end to the hard-earned Oakland unbeaten string. In Atlanta the following week, the weather was rainy, the field muddy, and the ball slippery. Slippery enough to contribute to a pair of crucial fumbles, which were keys to a Falcon win and Oakland's second straight loss. And so it came down to the big one. The Raiders and Chiefs battling for the title in pro football's toughest division. It's been that way for years, and it's always a hitting, bruising, punishing conflict. Kansas City took an early lead on a Dawson to Otis Taylor aerial and a Stena Rood field goal. The Raiders struck back when Namaya Wilson intercepted. Then Marv Hubbard blasted in for the score and almost drove the ball underground. It's that kind of rivalry. As time was running out in the first half, the Chiefs made a big first down. And with just one second left, their lead jumped to 13 to seven. Inches, seconds, and penalties proved decisive. An obvious interference led to Hubbard's second touchdown, and the silver and black battled back to a 14-13 fourth quarter lead. Safety George Atkinson's interception halted a Kansas City rally.
than George Blander's three-pointer was blocked a matter of inches. As the Chiefs struggled to survive, Namaya Wilson dove for the game-clinching interception, but it was not to be. The officials called it a trap, a matter of inches. Given another chance, Dawson hit Taylor in heavy traffic. This no-harm interference was called on an overthrown desperation pass. And then Stenerud's kick denied Oakland their fifth consecutive division championship. The season had come down to one game, one play, one inch, one penalty, one second, and heartbreak for the Raiders. But in 1971, the valiant Raiders had challenged overwhelming odds and blasted them head on. <laughs> As the season closed, 12-year All-Pro Santa Jim Otto was voted the Gorman Award by his teammates as Oakland's most inspirational player. And against Denver, every Raider deserved awards. They had finally lost a title, but never their pride. Against Denver, Pete Banazak got his eighth rushing score, a Raider season record. LaMonica, playing with a hand that would require off-season surgery, found Raymond Chester for another score. Number 23, a now healthy Charlie Smith made big plays. His return added a missing dimension to Oakland's potent offense. The defense with Tatum, Dwayne Benson, Bill Enyart, and the rest stood tall on a goal line stand that gave meaning to the motto, pride and poise. The Denver victory gave Oakland an 8-4 and 2 record, better than teams winning division championships and playing for conference titles. In Oakland, 1971 was a year when newcomers Moore, Slough, Seiler, Maxwell, Kogel, and Gibson had fought and won beside vets Jim Harvey, Gerald Irons, and other unsung heroes. One league championship and four consecutive division championships are Raider history. The total commitment to excellence made by Al Davis in 1963 continues, and the greatness of the Raiders is in their future. But when this grueling 1971 season is examined against all the great glory years, the silver and black may well have had their finest hour. <laughs>